Hey Rockhounds, welcome to this video in which I will show you where and how to collect fluorite from the small fry prospect in Rio Reba County near El Rito, New Mexico. To get to the location, start in Española and head north on Highway 84 towards Abiquiu. You will turn right or east on Highway 554 and you will cross over the Chama River. Four miles past the river, you will pull off and park on the left side of the road. Then you will go through a gate and down a little path to the arroyo. This is where you park and we're going to go into this arroyo back here and there's a fluorite vein back there that's easy and fun to rock hound on uh, federal BLM land. On the road, you follow this little path and it goes down into this arroyo here and then the fluorite vein cuts across the arroyo and as soon as you get down into the arroyo, start looking for purple. The fluorite here is purple and you'll find little pieces that are washed down from the vein right away when you get down into the arroyo. There's my first find for the day. A small piece of floor right here in the gravel of the stream bed. So this is what it looks like. It's kind of a pale purple. It's got some iron, oxidized iron on it, staining. It's kind of a translucent light purple and it's betroidal fluorite so it's not the normal cubic habit that most collectors are familiar with this is kind of a bubbly betroidal uh, crystal structure so first piece and you just go upstream I don't know a couple hundred yards maybe and then the stream splits and that's where you're going to start to find a lot of fluorite. The vein cuts across right in that vicinity. So it's very easy rock counting here. No strenuous hike, no hills. And the fluorite is very abundant once you get to the vein. So here's some pits that have been dug by people. This is the area of mineralization. Um, Basically, you have this buried fluorite vein that runs kind of down this way and across that way. And so all the little arroyos and channels and hills around here can, can have um, the fluorite that we're looking for. So this is a very prolific area. There's lots of fluorite all over the ground. Lots of Mostly kind of small pieces like that and that, but there's also bigger ones. Sometimes you'll, if you're very lucky, you'll find a piece that actually has barite crystals growing on top. And if I find one, I'll, I'll show that. But this is what it looks like. This is what you're out here trying to find. Light purple fluorite. So this is a big exploration pit that somebody dug up on the hill. There's fluorite everywhere. Not all of it is great material. You know, a lot of it is just kind of interesting, but maybe not worth taking. Um, the mound here is full of, full of it, full of fluorite. So the vein actually is kind of buried right here and somebody has dug down into it. And you can see the alteration in the rock. Whenever you see green like this, this is kind of epidote or something. It's a sign of 
of alteration when there's different colors of rock side by side like this. And alteration often means mineralization. And so it can be a great, uh, a great thing to look for when you're out rock hounding. But here, you can see this altered rock has fluorite veins in it. This is the fluorite in place. Now, some of the vein is very thin. There's other places where the vein is very thick and the pieces you can get out are actually cuttable. So, somebody did a lot of work out here trying to find a good source. Aha, so this is kind of what I was hoping to find something like this. This is a really beautiful piece. It has some iridescence, probably from iron staining. You can see the bubbly betroidal structure of it. And what's interesting is you can see the host rock, this crumbly, altered, kind of gross clay stuff. So that's what you're looking for. It's a great piece. A nice, heavy, cabinet specimen maybe. So from the pit on the uh, east side of the arroyo, if you look back, you can see this trench right here. So the vein cuts across basically from where we're standing back that way. And it's not just a vein, it seems to be like a network of veins. And so it's kind of interesting geology but look for fluorite between there all the way up the hill over here and even up to the crust up there I see altered rock up there and so these are all good places to go look for um, good specimens it's really windy up here but it's a great view you can see the road parking area is right there you can just come up the arroyo here it starts to widen out into this valley and you can hunt up all of the drainages here when looking for the fluorite down where my husband is right there seems to be a very lucrative spot I climbed up here and there's more pits dug the fluorite is kind of scrappy it's not great up here but um, certainly an area worth exploring a neat outcrop of the rock, host rock that the fluoride is in. And this is fluoride in place in situ. It's very thin here. It's weathered. It's not very beautiful. Come up the rock a little ways. There's a little vein right here. Kind of see a better purple color. But this is the host rock right here. There's this little drainage right here coming down from up where the altered rock pits are up here. And this little drainage here coming down is full of fluorite chunks and bits and pieces. There's a nice little sample, very sparkly on the surface, pretty translucent. So I'm going to go up there and see if pieces get bigger as I go up. See if I can find anything, you know, really spectacular. So here's a nice example of a vein. It's a uh, very small scale, but you see both sides of the vein have been filled with fluorite. There's a little gap between them. And this vein can be traced all along the rock right here. So this rock is crisscrossed with these types of veins. Here's another one going this way. I just haven't found a great outcrop yet with very thick veins, but that's what I'm after. This is a little outcrop of the host rock with fluorite veins that somebody has been digging on. I just want to show this is 
how the chlorite is exposed here. All throughout the rock there's seams of fluorite. Fluorite here. That's fluorite, fluorite. Very, very thin. We're kind of looking for bigger stuff like this and it seems like there's bigger stuff down here. Um, just digging a little bit to see if I could get any of it out. The larger size stuff. But um, I don't have the right tool. might just be easier to collect the stuff that's floating downhill from these pits, but it is kind of fun to try to dig it out of the ground yourself. Here's some of the pieces of fluorite that have been collected from the Small Fry Prospect. Um, this is the one I pulled out from digging. Pretty nice little piece. A lot of the pieces are about this size. The really cool thing about this betroidal fluoride is that if you zoom in and look real clear carefully, you can see that there's actually little tiny cubes, uh, partial cubes growing on the surface of the, of the fluoride. This is a nice piece because you can actually see the layered um, structure of the fluorite. These are the real prizes from the small fry. I did not find these this last time. I've been going out to this um, prospect for about 12 years and I can say that it's a little bit picked over. These larger pieces are pretty rare and the pieces with the barite crystals encrusting are extraordinarily rare. If you want to find these pieces, for the most part, look on the west side of the arroyo in where, around where the trench is, and um, you might have to do some digging to find things like this. This is a piece of the fluorite that I decided to cut and, and uh, partially polish. So I just cut a flat on the back, kind of gave it a teardrop shape. That's what it looks like, polished, partially polished. And then I left the surface natural because I really wanted the structure to be part of this little cab. So I might turn this into a pendant or something just for fun. But you can see that it's a pretty, pretty nice uh, stone, nice color. Um, Fluoride is pretty soft on the Mohs scale, so you don't want to put it in jewelry that's t that uh, like a ring or a bracelet that could be easily cracked or damaged. It's better for like a necklace or something. But overall, it was a pretty successful trip out there. Very interesting and fun location, easy for kids to rock hound. Um, so if you go out there, take your family and have a good time. And um, if you go out there, please leave me a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.